Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about Sheehan syndrome. Sheehan syndrome, also known as postpartum hypopituitarism, is a condition that occurs when there is a significant bleeding and low blood pressure during childbirth, leading to damage or necrosis or death of the pituitary gland. During childbirth, the pituitary gland may not receive enough blood supply, leading to tissue damage. This can result in the gradual loss or dysfunction of the pituitary hormones like that of growth hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone, and certainly prolactin which are essential for regulating various bodily functions including growth, reproduction, metabolism, stress response, and certainly lactation. Pathogenesis of Sheehan syndrome. During pregnancy, the anterior pituitary enlarges to almost twice its normal size. The physiologic expansion of the gland is not accompanied by an increase in blood supply from the low pressure venous system. So anterior pituitary gland is more vulnerable to go through necrosis. Any further reduction in blood supply caused by obstetric hemorrhage that is mostly postpartum hemorrhage or interpartum hemorrhage or shock may precipitate infraction of the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. Because the posterior pituitary is supplied directly from the arterial branches, it is much less susceptible to ischemic injury and is therefore usually unaffected. Pituitary necrosis may also be encountered in disseminated intravascular coagulation also called DIC and less commonly in sickle cell anemia elevated intracranial pressure, traumatic injury, and, and shock. So pituitary necrosis is not only caused by severe postpartum hemorrhage, but it may be associated with DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and certainly with sickle cell anemia, elevated intracranial pressure, traumatic injury, and shock of any origin. Okay, this is the image from, from Google. We found that this is the normal pituitary gland. During pregnancy, this increases. It becomes almost twice the size of the normal pituitary gland. Pituitary gland enlargement, compression of the vascular structure of the pituitary gland with the surrounding bone. Okay. So, what happens? Small, shella, tarsica size in comparison to that of the enlarged pituitary gland. There may be some genetic factor suggested antigen autoantibody. That is also another theory. There will be anti-pituitary antibodies metabolism. If you go there, ischemia, then coagulation abnormalities, congenital and or acquired. This may happen. The blood supply to the pituitary and the hypothalamus. Okay, here most of the pituitary in this case. Then in postpartum necrosis of the pituitary gland, what happened? Due to excessive bleeding, there will be vasoconstriction and the blood supply to the pituitary will be again compromised due to vasoconstriction. Okay, so what happened? This is the happening. Pituitary gland has gone after a postpartum period. It is not present. It should be like this, but it is like that. that. So we call it empty shella syndrome. Okay. There may be just fibrous band in the shella tarsica. That may happen. So postpartum necrosis of the pituitary gland, we found that mostly anterior pituitary is affected. There will be growth hormone deficiency muscle, bone, and adipose tissue does not they do not develop properly. Prolactin deficiency, very important. Prolactin is coming out of the lactotropsins. 
and breast will be atrophied, involuted. Thyroid stimulating hormone cannot function properly. ACTS deficiency, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone deficiency. So there will be menstrual irregularities. Okay. And there will be dryness of the vagina, there may be dyspareunia, there will be involution of the uterus. So there will be adrenal gland dysfunction, ACTS dysfunction due to lack of blood supply. Thyroid stimulating hormone deficiency lead to hypothyroidism. Okay, so this is the pathogenesis. Symptoms of Sheehan syndrome, failure to lactate because lack of prolactin. So milk is not produced, milk secretion is not initiated due to lack of prolactin, difficulty breastfeeding due to lack of prolactin, a hormone responsible for milk production, repeat breast involution, menstrual irregularities, involution of uterus and infertility is common, absence of menstruation that is amenorrhea or irregular menstrual cycle may occur. Fatigue and weakness due to deficiency in hormone that regulate metabolism and energy level. Low blood pressure, this can result from lack of adenocorticotropic hormone which stimulate adrenal gland to produce cortisol. Hypothyroidism and adrenocortical if insufficiency is also an accompaniment to the, to the other symptoms because almost all the, all the anterior pituitary hormone will be lost. Hypothyroidism and adrenocortical insufficiency, hair loss, failure to regrow, shape, pubic or axillary hair, Number seven is the skin depigmentation because of there is no ACTase, adenocorticotropic hormone. Diagnosis and treatment. Diagnosis of Sheehan syndrome involves blood test to measure hormone level, in particularly hormones of the anterior pituitary gland. Imaging studies such as MRI to assess the size and condition of the pituitary gland, usually the Schiller tarsica, partially or totally empty. Treatment typically involve hormone replacement therapy to replace the deficient hormone and manage the associated symptom. Women who have experienced significant bleeding during childbirth should be closely monitored for signs and symptoms of Sheehan syndrome. Okay, and that's all about the topic what we have covered so far. Sheehan syndrome. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends. Please subscribe me. Have a nice, wonderful, and blessed day. Bye now.